Hey. Whoa, whoa, easy. Hey, I, I got you something. I, I know Valentine's Day was a few days ago, but I, I couldn't find you. And I know we've had our differences, but I got you something. I'll see you later. Wait for it. What's up everybody, my name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics and today we're gonna see if a water fountain could save your life. But before we do, I gotta ask you a question. Do you recreational shoot? Do you hunt? Do you fish? Do you boat? Do you camp? Do you wear clothes? Do you wear boots? Do you like military surplus? Do you do anything that would be considered outdoor recreation? If you do, you need to check out Sportsman's Guide. They are today's sponsor. A big thank you to them for supporting the channel. They always have a lot of great deals and they have everything you could possibly need. If you decide to go check them out, make sure you use coupon code KBALLISTICS. It'll get you $20 off any order that's $100 or more. So like I said, today we're gonna be shooting this water fountain. I've wanted to do this test for a long time, but these things are kind of hard to find. So in an active shooter situation, if you were ducked down behind a water fountain, would it stop around? Could it save your life? And if it will stop around, what will it stop and what will it not stop? So we're gonna find that out today by starting out with something small and working our way up to something big. Real quick, I'm gonna give you a close-up of this thing and then we're gonna get started. So this is a pretty average water fountain. You can find these in pretty much any public building. And this thing is actually pretty heavy and I'm gonna show you why. This front piece should just pop off. Yep. It's got a lot of components inside, so I think it's got a pretty good chance at stopping something. So every time we shoot, we're gonna shoot up top once and at the bottom once. That way we hit the top components and the bottom components and then see what our results are. Okay, we're gonna start out with 22 long rifle and we're gonna be using a Smith & Wesson Victory. Okay, so we shot here and then we shot right here. Let's see if we made it through the other side. We did not. There is nothing on the other side. You know, I guess I could just leave this off so that we can see what's going on inside this thing. I'm not seeing anything up here. Oh, but you got a pretty big dent right here on the bottom. Okay, up next is nine millimeter. We're gonna be using some PMC bronze 115 grain full metal jackets. And we're gonna be using a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield 9EZ. So the nine made it through the front up top and down bottom, but it did not come through the other side. We got some liquid that is sprayed on the ground and I believe it's from this right here. There's probably some coolant inside that. There's the bullet right there, but I'm not gonna touch it because I don't want that liquid on my hands. And it looks like the nine stopped right there on the bottom. Up next is 45 ACP. We have some 230 grain full metal jackets and we have a Springfield 1911. So it looks like we made it to the top and the bottom, but we did not come out the other side. Oh, <laughs> there's the 45 round right there. I'm not seeing it in the bottom. I'm guessing it's lodged inside this thing. Now let's step it up to 10 millimeter. These are Underwood ammo, 200 grain full metal jackets, and we're gonna be using a Smith & Wesson model 610. coming out of that hose. So we made it through the top and the bottom, but we still have not made it through the water fountain. So it's looking like this thing is pretty tough. There's the round right there, but I can't find the round that we shot at the bottom. So I'm pretty impressed so far with this water fountain, but now we're gonna start stepping it up to some bigger things. 44 Magnum is next. These are Underwood ammo, 245 grain full metal jackets, and we're gonna be using a Smith & Wesson model 629. Woo, that's hitting a lot harder. Woo, that's hitting a lot harder. Yeah, I think we blew through the back on the bottom. So we hit here and we hit here. Now, 
the first shot was here and I did not hit this big white thing. So I wanted to take one more shot and see what would happen if we managed to hit that. So the first shot on the bottom ripped through and came out the back, obviously. The shot up top did not go through. I'm not really sure where we hit, but it did not make it through that thing. Now, the second shot, when I hit this, it stopped the 44 Magnum. So it looks like it went through the front, went through this, and then stopped right there. So to my surprise, this water fountain has stopped every pistol caliber we have thrown at it. So we're gonna step it up to the Mac Daddy of handguns, the Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum, and we're gonna be loaded up with some Underwood ammo, 500 grain flat points. Woo. I'm really curious to see what happened there. I'm really curious to see what happened there. Ah. I'm not really sure what happened with the bottom shot because I saw dirt fly up out the back, but there's still just the one hole from the 44 Magnum. So I'm wondering, did it just go through that same hole? So we're gonna shoot it one more time. Okay, so we had three good hits. I hit once up top and I shot it twice in the bottom. The top part of the water fountain definitely stopped it. There's no hole out the back. When I shot the bottom, I saw dirt fly up back here. So I assume that the round made it through, but there's no new hole. There's just the same hole from the 44 Magnum. So I thought, well, maybe it made it to that same hole somehow. So we shot it one more time still no new hole. I'm not 100% sure about the first shot, but the second shot, it stopped for sure somewhere inside this water fountain and did not go through the back. So the water fountain did pretty good at stopping pistol calibers. It even stopped the 500 Magnum. So we're gonna have to step up to a few rifles. We're gonna start out with some 5.56. This is PMC X-Tac 55 grain full metal jackets. And we're gonna be using a Wyndham Weaponry AR-15. All right, let's go see if it stopped that. So here's where we hit with the 5.56 up top, and here is our bottom hit. Wow, um, no hole out the back. So let's see, we went through right there. I see a little hole right there, but it did not make it through the back of this component right here. And down here, we hit right there. Looks like we came through. And then we passed through right here, and I guess we stopped about right there. So the water fountain stopped the AR-15, so now we're gonna move on to the AK-47, which is chambered in 7.62 by 39, and the ammo is PMC bronze, 123 grain, full metal jackets. I'm gonna shoot the bottom one more time. So I shot once up top and two times at the bottom. This thing is pretty tough. We do not have a hole at the back with the AK when we shot up top. When I shot at the bottom, I did make it through, but it seems like the only time we're making it through the bottom is when we don't hit this thing. So I took a second shot and there was not a hole at the back. So I know it's a little bit overkill, but I've got these PMC bronze 50 BMG 660 grain full metal jackets. Let's see if one of these will make it through that water fountain. Okay, we're gonna be using this Serbu RN50. I'm glad it wasn't arm day today. I would like to think that that made it through, but let's go check it out. Okay, so we knocked it off the cinder block. It looks like that's where we hit right there. It's pretty easy to tell that that's the 50 BMG hole. Uh, 
Oh my goodness. Look right there. I don't know if you can see it. There's where the 50 BMG hit. And oh my goodness. This water fountain stopped a 50 BMG. So I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone. I owe you guys a full auto Friday, and now I'm curious if this water fountain will stop a 50 BMG full metal jacket, how will it hold up against a fully automatic AK-47 and 30 rounds of PMC 7.62 by 39 full metal jackets? I'm thinking that it probably did not stop all of those. Okay, so we have a lot of new holes up front. Let's check out the back. Okay, well, I mean, it still did pretty well. That's really not that bad. This is all kinds of chewed up inside there. We're leaking some oil. It looks like we finally hit this thing. So it seems like if the round hits this, or this, it's not gonna make it through there. But if it doesn't hit this or this, and it just hits this metal, it's gonna zip right through the back. Well, that's gonna be it for today's video. This water fountain proved to be really, really tough. But I wanna say, not all water fountains are made the same. Just because this one stopped everything we threw at it, that does not mean that all water fountains are gonna stop bullets. And if I have the choice to hide behind a water fountain or a block wall, or an engine block, or a tree, something a lot more solid, I'm gonna pick that instead of a water fountain. But what we did learn today is if you were in a bad situation and all you had was a water fountain, it might stop something. Real quick, before you exit the video, I wanna let you know that KentuckyBallistics.com now has shirts again, and we have hats now. I'm super excited about this. So if you wanna support the channel, the easiest way to do that is by picking up some gear. You can check that out with a link in the description down below. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you're not already subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. Also make sure you hit the bell for notifications because YouTube won't always notify you when I upload a new video. It's not a guarantee, but at least you tried. If you really enjoy my content, make sure you're following me on Instagram, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitter. All those links can be found in the description down below or on my website, KentuckyBallistics.com. Again, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics, and I'll see you next time.